everybody, this is Jason. Welcome to Liberty Live. In this teaching, we're going to talk about what we believe is the golden bell from the Kohen Gadol in New Testament times, found in the city of David in a drainage channel. Join me into this video teaching where we talk about what it is, what it was, and what it means to us today from the New Testament church. Today, we're going to be talking about the golden bells. What are the golden bells and why are we discussing them today in Liberty Live? Very simple. In the book of Exodus, when we are in the wilderness, freshly delivered by God out of Egypt, we become a nation, Benai Israel, and we begin to advance the purposes of Christendom, Christianity, the believers, the covenants starting from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, passing the baton to the 12 tribes, to Moses and Aaron, the priesthood, the first priesthood, then we are survived by the judges, then the prophets, then we enter into the Brit Kadasha, the New Testament after the kings, and we find Jesus Christ now succeeding all men into the priesthood of Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, which is an eternal priesthood. So he is our Kohen Gadol, our high priest. Now, if here's a high priest, he has to have an outfit, a suit, something he wears that separates him by glory and beauty from the others. Now, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Here you see is a picture of a Kohen Gadol, the high priest of Israel, wearing a blue miel, wearing white linen garments underneath that, which is composed of shorts, a turban, a tunic, and a sash. And then you see on him a breastplate, again, which looks like linen and wool body armor, which is gorgeous tapestry of Tehelet, blue and purple, argamon and uh, indigo, and Tolachani. Uh, these are the Hebrew colors for the red, purple, and blue. Beautiful dyes, the tapestry, the dyes, the embroidery. And then you see in him this gorgeous crown called a mitre, which says, holy to the Lord. And then vector in, and then you saw the gorgeous gemstones. Look at the bottom, though, of what he's wearing. What you're going to see here is a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate. Follow me here to Exodus 28. The priest garments that you shall make for Aaron when he walks into the place of God. We're going to find it here in verse 33. You shall hem on the bottom of the garment pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and around its hem with bells of gold between them. A bell, a pomegranate, a golden bell, a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate around the hem of the robe. And it shall be on Aaron when he ministers. Remember, Aaron is the brother of Moses. Aaron was the first high priest of Israel called the Kohanim, Kohen, priest Gadol, higher exalted one. And when Aaron ministers, it shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord and when he comes out so that he does not die. Now, the holy place is seen here. You can see the golden altar, the menorah, and the table of showbread. Then behind this is the parroquet, the veil, which represents the body of Jesus Christ that was rent because behind that is not just the presence of God, it's the God of the presence on the Ark of the Covenant seen between the cherubim. Look at this scripture here. You, O Lord, enthroned between the cherubim. And here's another verse. When I beheld your power in the sanctuary, this is the throne room of God. Okay, so here's what I want to tell you, though, okay? 2,000 years ago, there was a street level below the street level. In other words, we find a street level, and there's another level below it that we find. And what do we find on this street level? A golden bell. Now, this golden bell is unlikely to be on layman's clothing. First of all, it's 24 karat gold. Second of all, can you imagine it still has the ringer in it? And it's a B octave. Well, first of all, is there anything that we find in the Bible that someone has a golden bell in the bottom of his robe? Yes, the Kohen Gadol, to make a joyful sound when he enters into the presence of God. This golden bell was found in the city of David. His name was Eli Sukran, and he found this in the city of David under the drainage channel. Now, they they believe, the hypothesis is that the Kohen Gadol was walking on his way through Jerusalem into the temple, the temple mount, and it got caught on something. Now remember, this is at the bottom of his robe. 
again, look at the high priest here and look at how low it is right here. Uh, it's, it's understandable that that could have got caught in something, but during the battle and the destruction, anything could have happened. We find this in a drainage channel 2,000 years later. But the point is we found it. We've got it. Now, this also appears in Exodus 39. And it reads, He also made a robe and an ephod woven of all blue, and an opening of the robe that was like the opening of a garment, and the binding of its opening so it would not tear. That's the top. And on the hem of his robe he made pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet yarns of fine twine linen. And he also made bells of pure gold and put the bells and the pomegranates all on the hem of the robe, the bells between the pomegranates. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is the pomegranate, okay? There's another pomegranate. My wife made these out of blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, fine twine. And what happens is when you put the bell in between there and put it on the hem of the robe, a couple things are gonna happen here. One, if you have these two gorgeous bells, right? Think of jingle bells. Those are ultimately, those are brass, but that's such a sound of the presence of God because when we herald the Christ child, our Messiah, all of a sudden we think of, you know, it is, it, there's all these uh, Christmas praise and glorious songs to worship God and to, to declare a good news that peace is on earth, goodwill towards men, because amen, you well, God is now with us in the flesh. Right now, but if these bells clang, they're, they're not going to make the right sound. An instrument that clangs together, Paul said, is like without love. It's a clanging cymbal. It doesn't make the sound it's supposed to make. Do you know a believer that doesn't praise is the same issue? We were created for good works in Christ Jesus as his workmanship before the world began. Do you know Jews, Jehuda, Judah, is one, the Bible says a true Jew is one who's right in his heart with God. Well, if you're really right with God in your heart, you should be giving thanks, open hands, open heart, open open countenance to love, praise, thank, bless. Well, that's what praise means. That's what a Jew is, is someone who perpetually and continually praises and thanks God because they know that he is with them and they know of all the wonderful things that he's done. Here's the secret. You know, if you praise God, he draws near to you. It says, I will inhabit the praise and thanks of my people. Amazing, right? Well, who do you not thank that doesn't thank you also, right? It's like, wow, you're kind, I'm kind. You draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. So this message, I think we understand. Now, uh, when these pomegranates acted as a buffer, first of all, they're so beautiful. Second of all, pomegranates are one of the seven species. They're an amazing super fruit with all kinds of benefits. But the other thing is that they have 613 seeds as an average in Jerusalem, representing the law. Some people think they're part of the tree of life. Other people go... Uh, are the knowledge of good and evil, and they go, yeah, but that's bad, and these are in the presence of God. They must be the tree of life, but we didn't eat that yet. Jesus said, if you are an overcomer, you will get the right to eat of the tree of life. That's why we were kicked out of the garden, so we didn't eat of the tree of life and live forever in a fallen state, but if we overcome in a fallen state, then we'll cross over in a resurrected state of glory, then we'll eat of the tree of life and live forever, right? So look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little pomegranates. Now, I want you to follow me to Psalm 150. Because I know what you're thinking. Okay, beautiful, beautiful praise like an instrument. Why? Well, don't you think a leader should set an example? Don't you think our life should play a song of mercy and of grace and of gratitude? Look what Psalm 150 says. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds, praising according to his excellent greatness. Praise be to him with trumpet sounds. Praise be to him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Praise him with everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Do you know that we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now you can do that verbally. I thank you, Lord, great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
As a matter of fact, you know that the name of Jesus Christ is the fruit of our lips. In other words, the highest thing that could ever come from your lips is the name of Jesus Christ with a sincere and committed heart. Beloved, that is power. Let's look at Psalm 138, verse 2 and 3. I bow down towards your holy temple. I will give thanks to your name, your steadfast love and faithfulness. You have exalted above all things your name and your word. Finally, I want to show you this. By the way, look at this. Here's the hem of the garment. He's in the presence of God, the one who wears this crown. Unbelie I mean, believe it, beloved. This beauty and glory belongs to God. I want to show you this verse here in Matthew 26, 30, because I know what you're thinking. You said a leader should show by example of praise. When did Jesus praise? Matthew 26, 30. Isn't God wonderful? Matthew 26, 30. And when they had sung a hymn, Hymn is a Greek word, hymn, hunsantis. It means to cant or cantation, which is a song, a repeated melody and or song, whether it's a cappella or with instruments, the word renders the same. And when they had sung a song, sung a hymn and canted, cantation, they went out of the Mount of Olives. Beloved, this is right before Jesus prays John 17, in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is called the High Priestly Prayer, when you pray to make atonement for the priest, the nation, everything. That's the final prayer before forgiveness is granted on Yom Kippur every year. So Jesus goes in once and for all in John 17. That's why in your Bible, right at the subheader, John 17, it should say High Priestly Prayer or the Prayer of the Konim Gadol, the High Priest. Jesus is the High Priest of our confession. Amen. So, we know in heaven, what is he wearing? Believe me, in, in Revelation, we find songs all over the place. There's a song of Moses. When we crossed over the Red Sea and started becoming a nation of priests. Look at Exodus 19.5. God said to Moses, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you will be my treasured possession among all peoples, for the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now that was the invitation. Let me show you the fulfillment. Here's the fulfillment. <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 5, we're before the throne of God, where we see Jesus getting ready to open the scroll and its seven seals. And it reads in verse 9, the incense is rising, which are the prayers of the saints. That's in verse 8 and verse 9. And then they sang a new song. Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed the people of God. See, just so you know, when Moses tells the people from Yahweh, he says, tell them I'm going to make them a nation of priests, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, he splattered blood upon the altar and the people. The first covenant was inaugurated by blood. So the second covenant also has to be inaugurated by blood. What blood is that? This is the new cup in, in the new covenant in my blood. This is my body, which is broken for you. Beloved, it happened at the cross. So as the believers, the nation, B'nai Israel, our heritage, our roots, our foundation starts all the way back to Abraham. Isn't it interesting that Melchizedek, Melchizedek comes out to Abraham, blesses him, gives him bread, and wine. Now Moses has, that God has Moses erect the tabernacle. The priesthood begins and inside the holy place, bread on the table of showbread and libation, wine in the presence of God. Next thing you know, in the New Testament, the new covenant, the, the total consummation of all things, Jesus says, this is the new cup and this is the bread, bread and wine. Same covenant, love it all the way back. It's not a new idea. It was from the beginning. Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Now, he's saying, I did what I said I would do. And what is that? 
You were slain by your blood. You ransomed people for God, every tribe, every language, every people, and every nation. You have made them a kingdom of priests to our God, every tribe, not just the 12 tribes of Israel. Now it goes over to the Goyim, to the Gentile nations. Beloved, when God made us in the garden to be fruitful and multiply, we ended up becoming all the nations of the earth. But he gave us a gift called the priesthood and made us a holy nation to be light and salt to the world. And he called that a priesthood, a nation of people who will serve, honor, lead to God, right? That will draw all men to God and that God could be known to all men. This is our job in Christ Jesus, to be salt and light to the world. Beloved, when we crossed over the Red Sea, we came out of the waters from slaves to sons. We sang a song. We gave praise to God. Now, when Jesus fulfills it, goes and puts the blood on the mercy seat once and for all, they sing a new song and give praise to God. And beloved, it's amazing that we find this in the city of David, the apple of God's eye, the beloved of God. Beautiful, beautiful golden bell. I want you never to forget this as long as you live. Beloved, the Bible is true. Jesus Christ is resurrected in glory and in power forever. Ever living to make intercession for the saints. Beloved, will you call upon the Lord? Will you begin to praise God? Think about everything he's done for you. And think about everything he will do. You see, Christians are supposed to be full of praise. The believers of God are supposed to be overflowing with gratefulness, with gratitude. You know, my son says you can have, you can have a cloud with no rain. You can have a temple with no priests. You can, you know, which is fine as long as God's there. But what if you have a temple with no God? What if you have a car without wheels, a wallet with no money, a fridge with no food? What if you have a priest garment with no praise, with no bells? God brought us forth in praise, beloved. Do you know he sings over you? Do you know it's written in Zechariah that he sings over us? What does that sound like? Matthew 26, 30. He sang over the Talmudim, over the disciples, of the great things that he had done and that he was going to do. You know, that's why we have holidays, is to praise God. Days that are hallowed because God did something awesome. And that's why we sing praise. That's why I was telling you earlier about the songs like Christmas carols and all of the grand Hallel psalms give praise to the God of God's for his mercy endures forever at Psalm 136. And it goes on and on to tell of what God has done. Beloved, let us not forget all the wonderful things that God has done. Let us bless the Lord all my soul and forget not his benefits. Hey, I have this thought. You invite your guest over and they ring the doorbell. Bing bong. Now you know your guest is here. In the same way, when the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, enters into even the temple courts and the Azara, means the place where God helps us, that is where people hear the difference between the priest and the high priest. First of all, he has different colors, gold, uh, different symbology, badges, brands, names, authority, just like a high-ranking officer or an official, regardless of the field, firefighter, policeman, military. Usually the higher-ups have higher visibility in it as, as far as their dress. The difference between the Kohen Gadol, though he has higher visibility, is he also has the sound realm. You see, when a high-ranking officer enters, you salute him, but he doesn't make a sound. Maybe someone else, when the president enters, they may say, they may say a verbal thing. They could say the same thing about the Kohen Gadol. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is why they said, until Israel says, Baruch Abba Bashem, right? Blessed is he who comes in the name, the name of the Lord. Bashem Adonai Yahashua, Jesus Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus, because we acknowledge your high rank, O Lord, the Lord's rank, but also the bells, like a doorbell. It's a sound of praise. It's like, let all the earth praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let every instrument that was made for praise, praise. Even on his garments, there is praise happening when he enters the place, which means people understand that God's appointed authority is here. And there's no appointed authority without God, which means the authority that points to God represents that. It's not that that 
high priest is here alone. It's that the God of the high priest is here. And this is who appointed the high priest, first of all. Second of all, you said the high priest goes into the holy place. Yeah. Do you know in Yom Kippur, though, he can't wear his golden garments. What's that about? Well, remember when Jesus said, when you go into your room, close the door, pray in secret. When you give, give in secret. When you fast, fast in secret. That's not something you sound the trumpets. That's not something you alarm everyone to. That's something done in quiet. Isn't it interesting that during the time that the high priest goes into the holy place, now he goes into the courtyards every day, and everyone honors and acknowledges God, and he, he runs and supervises the priesthood for the whole temple complex. But on Yom Kippur, when he goes in for the priestly duties, beloved, he goes in only with the linen garments. In other words, he goes in in secret, without a sound, and whatever you do in secret will be rewarded openly. When he went in and make atonement secretly, it was rewarded openly. He went in quiet, he came out loud. He went in low, he came out high, not by himself, but because God exalted him. Wherefore, he has a name, Cohen Gadol, the one who is exalted. Thank you.